And Yale Gracie and I actually built a full set on one of the sound stages with the Pepper's Ghost Illusion, and we did every illusion that's in the Haunted Mansion in that one in that one sound stage. And we used to bring Walt over all the time and show him all the illusions that we were preparing for um, for it. And at that time, of course, Walt wanted it as a walkthrough. After Walt passed away, operations panicked and made it a ride. But I personally feel that it should have been a walkthrough because uh, you could have far better shows. When you go on the ride now, it's just people going around in circles down below like mannequins. There's no animation to them whatsoever. To where if we had done it as people came in and stood in a room and we did the Pepper's Ghost, we'd actually have animatronic figures backstage that you could see through that would be animating and they would come and they would go. It's an interesting story, Pepper's Ghost Actually, a very close friend of mine by the name of Jim Steinmeier has just published a book on Pepper's Ghost. And that particular illusion goes back to 1500. I mean, they were using that illusion that far back. The reason it's called Pepper's Ghost is in 1860, there was a gentleman by the Professor Pepper that did an onstage sword fight uh, with a ghost. And, uh, and that's where the Pepper's Ghost name came from. It basically, it's reflection of glass. And, I, and a lot of people say, gee, really, you know, how do they do the reflection of the glass? And I tell them, what you want to do is sit in your living room when you've got a fire going, or maybe even the lights over your table, and look out the window. Look at the window and look out the window, and you will see your fire on your front lawn. And that's basically all it is. It's just a form of reflection. And it's, and it's how you stage the form of reflection. Uh, he loved it. Well, it was Yale Gracie that came up with Pepper's Ghost. And it, they didn't call it Pepper's Ghost. I'm the one that found it in a book later on. And it says Pepper's Ghost. So I'm the one that started calling it Pepper's Ghost. And uh, we built little models, little black boxes with uh, pieces of glass in there. And Walt would come up and then we would show him exactly by these little models exactly how Pepper's Ghost worked and how you could, the intensity of the light, that we bring the light up and we take the light down that way, the little ghost would appear or disappear or you could see through him. So Walt saw, see everything we did was in model form to show Walt and uh, because he wanted to see it in model form and so that was all proven that way. He loved it, he loved it and he also loved the head and the ball. I mean, that was another one of Yale's craziness that, that he came with. I loved working with Yale Gracie because he was like a little Geppetto. The guy was always building stuff and, and coming up with things. And then, of course, we Walt would stop by. We had a whole uh, room to ourselves uh, for over a year to do nothing but develop ghost illusions and uh, special effects. And there's kind of a cute story that goes along with that because when I grew up in animation, we always play gags on each other on a daily basis. And it was just nuts. It was just crazy, but it was wonderful. As long as you did 30 ducks a day, you're okay. And so meanwhile, you could do some crazy things. Well, Yale and I were working in the, uh, had the room blocked off, and we were working with UV lighting, black lighting. We had skulls, and, and my wife had made a, a, a ghost out of China silk that came up and shook that had a squirrel cage fan in it. We had a monster that we shot with an infrared gun, and it blew up and everything. These were just, we were just, it was trial and error and just crazy stuff. Well, we got a call from personnel one day and they said, the janitors request that you leave the lights on when you leave at night. So Yil and I said, oh, okay. So what we did was we set up the ghost, we set up the, the monster, we set up two or three other gags that we had, and then we put the infrared beam right in the middle of the room. And then we left the lights on very low, but we had connected all the lights to the UV lighting so that when they broke the beam, the stuff would go off. Well, sure enough, we came in the next day and the ghost had been going all night long. The head of the monster was hanging in the middle of the room because we had a string on his head and the other things that we had were lit and right in the middle of the floor was a broom. And we got, and we got a call from Priscilla saying, they're never coming back. <laughs> but that was it, that we had fun. I mean, it was, you know, as hard as you worked and the things that you did, there was always that, uh, that fun that went along with it.